Hey everybody, I'm Tink. I know it's a little bit late in the day, but I still wanted to do our Tuesday Take the Power Back video. Um, today's topic is going to be developing healthy support systems. Um, so this is something that a lot of people struggle with because a lot of times when you're going through mental health issues, mental health issues, um, you struggle to find people that are actually healthy for you and not ones that are just convenient or toxic. So I'm going to be doing a quick look and also covering some of the, the benefits and tips on how to develop these healthy support systems for you. So let's get started. Okay, so I found an article that's done by the University of Buffalo School of Social Work. Social work. I can't talk today, guys. I'm sorry. It's been a, an emotional roller coaster of a week um, and weekend and day. So just bear with me. But anyway, so the University of Buffalo School of Social Work um, and the article is titled Developing Support Systems. So uh, they talk a lot about some of the different benefits of having um, emotional support systems, healthy ones. Um, and some of those benefits are as follows. So research has shown tremendous benefits in terms of bettering mental and physical health um, when it comes to having good social support. Um, it also increases your life expectancy, your well-being, resiliency in times of distress and loss. So really, it's super healthy in like every way that you can think of to have those good support people in your life. Um, and yeah, so that's why we're talking about it today. Crazy. Okay, so they say that good support can help you identify your stressors or sometimes if those people are healthy and they know you well, then they can actually tell before you are if you're stressed out or in a crisis. So I talked about in um, one of our goals groups and I think in one of uh, my other videos that I did for the Take the Power Back series um, about my friend Stevie and then also Michelle, the co-founder of Rehab Cosmetics. Um, both of those women are very, very close to me and I consider them to be very healthy uh, support people in my life. Um, chill! And both of them can literally look at me like when I'm feeling stressed and they'll know before I even do like what kind of things I'm feeling or what's going through my head. Um, and that can actually be super beneficial because if you don't know what's going on, if somebody else knows, they can help. Crazy. Okay. So healthy support people also can provide you with information, advice, guidance, support, comfort, and security, which is super important because if you don't feel safe with the people that you're around, you're going to freak out even more. Um, and they can provide you an emotional boost by listening to your hopes, fears, dreams, providing some sort of conflict resolution, problem solving, and encouragement. So kind of boosting your self-esteem by having good people around you. Who'd have thought? Okay. So in order to sustain those relationships, if they're healthy already, you have to be able to sustain them. And it's all give and take. Um, one person can't be constantly there and not have somebody there for them too. So if you have those healthy support people in your life, make sure that you're taking care of them just as much as they're taking care of you because otherwise they're not going to be able to sustain themselves and they can't help you out if they can't help themselves. So kind of talking about like the self care and setting boundaries. It's insane how all of this works together. So, um, give and take. Right. Give and take. Um, so part of that is being able to show appreciation for them um, and their place in your life. Nobody is going to want to keep helping you if you don't show appreciation for them because then it's like, okay, why am I even doing this if they don't even care? You know what I mean? It's like when you go to work and you're just like, man, I don't want to do this because my boss keeps telling me I ain't. I ain't crap, um, so I'm not going to do it anymore, right? It's the same thing with your friend groups, guys. You have to be able to have that healthy balance there, um, showing them support as well as them showing you support. So showing appreciation, staying in touch, 
Um, I know a lot of people have a hard time with this. I do too, um, because a lot of times I try to isolate myself, which isn't good, but, and I can go like weeks without responding to a text message sometimes when I'm like really, really bad, but that's not healthy either, people. You got to be able to keep those lines of communication open because if you don't, then when you really do need them, they're probably not going to respond because you've been ignoring them for so long and then vice versa as well. Like if somebody stops talking to you and then all of a sudden they reach out, you're like, oh, great. Like, this person hasn't talked to me in forever. Like, what do they want? Um, so make sure that you stay in touch and keep those lines of communication open with people. Be available when you're needed. So like I said, it's a give and take, guys. Um, if they're there for you, make sure that you're there for them too because it, it's not just a one-way street. You got to be able to reciprocate um, that, that support when necessary. So otherwise you're just going to lose all those relationships because they're there helping you, but then you won't help them in return. Like it's kind of messed up. Um, accept their help. So just because somebody said something that you don't agree with or you don't like because you're like all in your feels doesn't mean that they're not right. And uh, you have to be open to, to the advice that they do give you. Um, so like, if your friends are super good for you and they're like, hey, this dude is treating you like crap, you should probably at least take it into consideration instead of getting defensive and being like, no, oh, he's awesome. You just don't know him. No. Listen to him. Or at least give the idea a thought. Right? Um, support their successes. If they want you to be happy, make sure that you're happy for them when they accomplish something, right? Um, be their cheerleader because if they're being yours, then they deserve that from you. Um, keep communication open, staying in touch, right? Same thing. Keep the communication open. Keep those lines open on both sides. Um, respect their needs, limits, and boundaries. Okay, so this is super important too because everybody is going to have their own comfort level and sometimes it's not going to jive with exactly what you want them to say at that moment or what you want them to do at that moment and that's okay because everybody has their own limits. Everybody has their own boundaries and sometimes people need to step away for their own well-being. Um, and that's not your fault. It's just people need to take care of them, too, you know? We talked a lot about healthy boundaries and stuff um, in the last couple of videos. And this just kind of all ties into that, too. And then know when the relationship doesn't work. So if somebody is obviously toxic, no matter how fun they are to be around or how cool they might be, sometimes things just don't work. Sometimes things just aren't healthy. And you have to be able to recognize that and identify that when that's the case and move forward with your lives in an adult manner because that's what we are, people. We're adults. Act like it. Okay. So your support system should reduce stress, not increase it. 100% um, agree because if you have somebody that's in your life and you're like, oh my God, like they just stress me out every time they talk to me. Um, that's probably not healthy, and you should probably cut ties, just, right? Um, so, how to build a support system, right? Getting into the good stuff. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can do that. Um, I mean, simply joining, like, a club or a group of some sort, right? That can actually really help out because, you, you know, you just find something that you enjoy doing. And guess what? There are other people in the world who probably enjoy it too. Um, so going out and finding things that you enjoy, finding hobbies, trying new stuff out, right? That can actually make a world of difference because you're going to be putting yourself out there, finding new healthy coping skills like we talked about before. Um, and then also meeting new people who are probably like-minded or at least have some sort of similarities with what you want from your life and what you want to do and enjoy. So that can definitely help just kind of getting yourself out there a little bit and trying out some new stuff. Um, so like for me, 
Um, one of the things that I did when I was still in California was I volunteered um, for Habitat for Humanity. And by doing that, I actually met a lot of absolutely amazing people who shared the same goals and visions as me. Um, you know, and you find these people in, like, the most random of places, too. Like, never did I think that by, like, going out and, like, selling stuff at a restore that I would find people that I would make lifelong friends with. Okay. So, going out, um, some of the examples that they have here are volunteering, um, sports, clubs, taking local community classes, so, like, a dance class, a cooking class, um, really any type of class that, like, gets you out of your house and around other people for a little bit. That's always good. Um, let's see, what are other ones? School, so going to, like, college, um, or even just, like, checking out some, like, local, like, programs that you can go to, just taking, like, a makeup class, um, that would be dope. Uh, some of the other examples that they have are church, families, neighbors, co-workers, friends, and s online resources. Um, so online resources, um, it kind of ties into, like, community resources, too, because you can have, like, the support groups and stuff. Um, so, like, I know that there are a lot of support groups for, like, veterans with, um, PTSD. Um, there are also support groups for literally pretty much anything, guys. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for, to be absolutely honest. Um. Yeah, so those are some examples of different types of groups that you can look at. Or different types of resources, classes, things that you can do to kind of help make those better support systems um, in your life. Um, and then it says, why is it important? Um, you need to be able to build your support systems before you actually need them because um, it takes time to build relationships with people. Not everything's going to happen overnight. Not everybody is going to have the ability to do what you need them to do or be there for, like, what you need them to be there. So it does take time, and you have to put time and effort into building those relationships before you're in a time of crisis. Because if you don't, then you're going to, like, start while you're all freaked out. And people aren't going to understand and they're not going to want to to deal with that because they don't know you like that, bro. They just don't. Okay? I mean, how would you feel if this person that's like practically a stranger just came up to you one day and was like, Hey, I'm having a total mental breakdown. Want to talk about it? I mean, it's not likely that people are going to appreciate that very much. Like, let's just be real. Like, there are some people out there that would be like, hey, man, like, I'm here for anybody, anytime, no matter what. Um, but not everybody is like that, unfortunately. So, you have to be able to work on those things. Um, and kind of take care of it before it becomes a problem. So, like, think of it this way. Um, are you going to... Call a plumber when things are just a little leaky or are you going to wait until the pipe bursts in your bathroom and your basement are flooded you know what I mean because it's a lot more expensive and a lot more time consuming and painful um, to call a plumber after the fact when you know you knew that it was leaky you should have taken care of it beforehand and, I mean, if you don't, that's okay. It's just going to make things harder for you later on, like, down the road and stuff. And nobody wants that, guys. Like, we want to be here for you. Um, you know, people love you. People care about you. They want to see you succeed and be happy. Um, but you have to start that, guys. Like, you have to be the ones to make the choice, like, hey, my relationships aren't healthy. I need to fix that. 
or hey, I have these healthy relationships, but they're just not where I need them to be right now, right? And being able to own that and be like, okay, cool. So like, this is what I need to work on. This is what I need to fix. These are things that I need to talk to my support people about. Or like, I need to open the communication up. Or I haven't been like super supportive lately. I probably should be. You know, just stuff like that. Like little things that you can practice and that you can work on. And uh, just make your life a little bit better and a little bit easier in the process. You know, like... We're all here for each other, man. Like, we're all human beings, and there's too much hate in this world to just go around and keep spreading it. We have to get out there and show people that, you know, we care and that there are people out there that are willing to listen and be here, you know? Because, I mean, I am, and I hope everybody that's watching these videos is, too. Because um, that's kind of the point of, like, what we're doing and, like, why these videos exist and why our company is you know, starting and everything like that is to show people, like, you aren't alone, like, we are here, it is possible, everybody struggles sometimes, and you know what, that's life, that's being human, you are perfectly imperfect, darling, um, you just have to realize that, and realize, like, where your faults lie, and be open to working on them and taking like suggestions and taking advice and accepting the help that is given to you because otherwise you're not going to move forward at all and it's going to be sad and it's going to be painful and it's going to hurt not just you but the people around you too so With that, my darlings, I am done. Like I said, kind of a quick look today, kind of a quick topic, um, but that doesn't make it any less important. Building these support systems will help you so much more than you realize, and being able to identify the toxic relationships that you have is super important too, because you can't move forward with your healthy relationships if you're stuck in the past or stuck working on people that, you know, have no business being in your life and taking up your energy. Um, so once again, this is an article called Developing Your Support Systems by the University of Buffalo School of Social Work. If you guys want to Google them, you're more than welcome to. I really appreciate y'all uh, tuning in. Jeez, I told you. Don't listen to me. Um, I don't know how to speak tonight, so whatever. But I will say this. Go out there. Stay beautiful. Stay strong. Stay amazing. Right? And remember, you are perfectly imperfect, and that is totally okay. Um, and just go out there and be the best you that you can be. And if that involves cutting people out of your life that aren't good for you, that's what it takes. Um, and for a little bit more uh, advice on how to do that, refer back to that boundaries video that I did, the very first one, I think. Um, because it talks about how to set those limits and how to approach those situations with people in your life where you need to set those boundaries. So once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. I love every single one of you and I'll see you again soon.